All right, I just took the hybrid battery out of the car and you can see there is corrosion. Significant amount of it too on every single bus bar. My car is 2010 with 96, 98,000 miles. You can see every bus bar is showing corrosion. So it's a good thing this is happening. Also found a couple of Flaming Hot Cheetos in here. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna get it cleaned up. Gonna replace it with the lithium. Alrighty, well, welcome. So our first video in the series of the lithium iron phosphate replacement, we went over what the advantages were of the lithium iron phosphate battery pack and some of the claims that the battery pack made and talked through some of the advantages, why we may want to consider lithium iron phosphate versus a nickel metal hydride replacement. And in this video, I want to touch on some of my thoughts having now driven, um, what does it say here, about 240 miles on one tank, or I should say it's really a full tank. I did a half of the previous tank and I'm now tracking my first full tank with this pack. Um, and just wanted to go over some thoughts on what I've experienced so far, my mileage numbers, and then also show a couple of the tests that I've been able to run as well. My first thing that I noticed when I was installing this pack, because I wanted to make sure that everything was installed appropriately, but didn't want the engine to run in the garage, I started the car, put it in EV mode with the new hybrid pack installed, and I noticed that it stayed. With however many bars you see here, I guess that's, uh, if there's one, it's, what is that, seven? It normally shows six. It stayed on six bars for probably close to 15 minutes, which is an exorbitant amount of time compared to what I was used to seeing. And my battery pack didn't throw any codes. So it was a healthy pack, at least in, in that it wasn't throwing any codes. So that was my first impression. And then on the first test drive, it became very apparent that I'm going to get better mileage as well. So that was the, the second thing that I noticed. And in this um, trip that you can see here, trip A, um, I just reset it and I'm now getting 55. Whereas in my last video, I talked about how um, actually my how to drive a, free, a Prius efficiently video, we were seeing around 50, 51 miles per gallon. So I'm seeing about a 10% increase here. However, on my previous trip, and it's averaged out here for trip B. So I have about 500 miles on this battery pack now. Um, I got 58 for that, uh, that tank. So it depends on your driving techniques. And I'll get into some of that a little bit later in this video as well. But I drove um, almost exclusively in the city on the first pack um, with some highway mixed in. And then on the second um, tank here for trip A, um, I had done almost exclusively highway driving and I'm still seeing increased um, my mileage there. So that was the second thing that I took away. Um, and a couple things I want to show um, or at least touch on, I'll need to jump over to Hybrid Assistant to do that. So I'm going to jump over there or at least have it be backdropped while I do a voiceover to describe what I'm seeing while I'm driving and kind of my perceptions and things I've noticed with as far as this pack goes and increased performance. This is the test that I ran um, to test voltage sag, which is a term that we uh, mentioned in our first video where I described the lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry and its advantages um, just from a you know a high level. So looking at, at the test here, so I have hybrid assistant open and just some additional context before I hit play on my recorded video here. Um, what we did is upon entering or going up a specific hill, and it was the same hill for both the lithium iron phosphate and nickel metal hydride pack, um, I wanted to, at around 70% state of charge, so I have 69% state of charge, I wanted to go ahead and see how the voltage would sag if I'm pulling the maximum amount of power that the Prius can pull, which is right around 20 kilowatts, um, or say around 90 amps uh, from the battery, which is obviously a very high load in an extreme scenario, but it's also one in which we're going to see voltage sag. So um, what I have now is I have the lithium, or I have the nickel metal hydride pack installed for this video. And you'll see before we start to draw any current or at least appreciable current from the battery, um, right around seven amps, we're looking at um, 236 volts as kind of our starting voltage before we apply a significant load. Um, something else to note, the temperature outside is 75, inside it's 73. I'll leave on the second test, it's a little bit colder. 
um, which is not, um, and that second test was lithium iron phosphate. So that's not going to be an advantage for nickel metal hydride or an advantage for lithium iron phosphate. Just keeping those temperatures in mind, they are negligible in terms of their differences, but I'll point them out when we get to that second video. Um, so we're at 69% state of charge, 236 volts. Our discharge current limit is 21 kilowatts. That's the most amount of power we can pull from the pack. So when I hit play here, we'll slowly kind of uh, scroll through here till we get to our discharge right here, which is at 15, 16, 18, 20. So 20 is the most amount of current we pulled from the pack. You'll see now we've dropped to 67% state of charge in just that time of starting to pull power from the battery. We pulled, it looks like 101 amps and our voltage has dropped to 195. So from 236 to 195 is our voltage sag. There's our 236. So now let's jump over and let's see what our voltage sag looks like on the lithium iron phosphate pack for the exact same test done in the exact same hill with the same uh, battery starting uh, percentage. All right, so now what we have in front of us is the lithium iron phosphate test. The exact same test was performed. Um, like I said, the temperature is a little bit colder outside. The pack is a little bit colder. Instead of 87, we're looking at 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and if I hit play, we'll, we'll see, we click on the battery here. So we start out at 70%. There's our starting voltage, which is a little bit lower. So there we go. You can see here at 70% state of charge, we're pulling 20 kilowatts and we're pulling 91 amps, um, because our voltage has stayed a little bit higher. We don't need to pull as many amps for the same output of 20 kilowatts, but our voltage sag is significantly less. I mean, when we started this video and we started looking at it, we're at 229, 230 volts it only dropped to 216 when we got to 20 kilowatts. That's pretty impressive um, that we are only dropping about 10 volts comparatively. So there you have it. So there's 216 as our voltage at 20 kilowatts discharged. Um, we'll see when we drop back down. So now we're obviously putting two kilowatts into the battery. Um, we're at 228. So right around 230 is our starting voltage only drops about 15 volts to 215 was the voltage sag. So Pretty impressed, honestly, with these results to only see 15 volts of voltage sag compared to 45 um, of the nickel metal hydride. Um, but yeah, those are the results for the voltage sag test. All right, so this second test that I completed was honestly as simple as it gets. From 60% state of charge, how long can I run only the air conditioner at max capacity. That means temperature set to low, AC on, fan as high as it goes. No other auxiliary components are running. Um, how long can I just sit in my driveway uh, and do that? And so I did that with nickel metal hydride. And so let's scroll through. You'll see the tests that we ran. Um, I guess, <laughs> guess we'll start with the results. So you see here that our EV, that's electric vehicle, it was six minutes and 42 seconds. So that's how long our test ran. And that's how long it was able to stay at, you know, running the AC at maximum capacity. And we'll scroll down. You'll see the start state of charge is 60.78. So we're in the, the hundreds place of percentage wise. So take note of that 60.78%. Um, also, why not? The average ambient temperature is 71 degrees, although the amount pulled from the compressor when it's at full tilt won't matter much based on the temperature. But anyway, um, so you're looking at 71 degrees, 60.78 in a total time of running as 6.4 or six minutes and 42 seconds. Um, and you can see that graphed out here. So you'll see the sharp drop off at the end. And we talked about this in the last video about how nickel metal hydride doesn't have such a linear curve. So when the battery is discharging, um, it will, like you see here, it'll go at somewhat of a, of a standard curve, but then it'll start to very sharply drop off at the end. And you may notice this while you're driving with your current hybrid battery. It dies very quickly at the end. Maybe it goes from three or four bars down to two and, you know, engines running and won't stop because it's charging the battery in a matter of minutes, which is exactly what you see here for the first five minutes. It's at a close to linear curve, but then it's the last minute from 1358 to 1359 that it literally just nose dives. Um, so something to note there, that's our battery capacity. Um, and you'll see there's the current or our amps. Um, and you'll notice as those, those increase as it goes over time. So we, yeah, that's, a, that's expected. So, um, the other thing I wanted to touch on is how much power left the battery. So total energy from the battery is 0.175. So when you're in hybrid assistant, that, uh, 
that item you see in the in the left hand panel i guess you can customize it but um, that right there 0.175 is what i was looking at um, so that shows you how much power you've used and the graph is kind of useless here because we didn't have any speed um, and then you'll see that here as well um, that we are at 0.1 kilowatt hours so 0.175 is what i looked at as energy from the battery when we went from 60 down to 30% state of charge. And you'll see here, there's our minimum state of charge. So we started at 60.78. We ended at 39.61. Um, so using the full 40% state of charge, a little bit more actually. So we cheated in, in, um, in favor of nickel metal hydride here a little bit. Uh, we got six minutes and 42 seconds. So now let me generate the report for the lithium iron phosphate. So I actually did this test on the day I did the battery swap. So let me jump over to the next test and I'll show you um, what I get for those results. What you're looking at here is the test I did today and it is in like this European date format. So that is October 5th. We did our test today. You'll see right off the bat, we got double the time. Uh, we're talking 12 minutes and 37 minutes, which is uh, consistent with like, say if you did an EV range test, that that is on my list of things I want to do. Um, but I've already done an EV range test on the nickel metal hydride. It's about one mile. And there's also already been a range test for these lithium iron phosphate, uh, packs as well. So I'll, I'll put a link to that down by, um, in the description here, but that's already been done. You expect about double. So this result isn't surprising. Um, and you'll notice our start state of charge was 60.78. So exactly the same to the hundredths place. And our end state of charge is again, the same at 39.61 average ambient temperature is 73 degrees. Again, all very similar. Um, none of those are going to lead to a exactly double or mul a, a multiple of two change in how long you're able to run the AC at full tilt. Um, and just to show, I mean, we, we want to look at our state of charge drop. You'll see very linear curve here. Looks completely different. Um, and you'll see it drops very steadily the entire way. There is no change. And I was running the AC at full blast the entire time, not touching the air conditioner while the test is running with the fan at full blast. And you'll see that at battery as battery current here. So you'll see the battery current basically stays very linear. I'm not sure why it drops um, just slightly in the middle here, but we're pulling, what is this? Uh, two, four, six, six or seven amps, which would make sense uh, based on how much we're pulling. Um, and also just, just to show what we pulled from the battery is 0 0.309 is energy from the battery. So again, almost double the amount of energy we're able to pull from the battery before the, before it dies. So it's just a much more efficient pack and it's, and all of this translates to real world efficiency. So when you're driving the car, um, you notice a lot of this, um, the power is more subtle, I would say, but noticing how much charge you gain from regen and how, how, how it takes longer to discharge that, especially this last, this last bit here where you are right at like say 45% state of charge, that 45 used to die with a snap of a finger with the uh, nickel metal hydride with lithium iron phosphate. 45 is just as good as when you're at 55, it will just drop linearly. Um, so it's technically speaking, it's the same as if you're at 60 because it will drop at that same rate as you're driving. So it's a massive, massive advantage when you're driving your Prius. You have a an advantage to how you're going to get better efficiency. And knowing this information now, I may change slightly the way I'm driving to favor EV in more situations, um, EV mode, I should say, uh, because it doesn't penalize me as much. Because if I get to 40% state of charge and my battery dies, it takes so long for the nickel metal hydride to recover from, from charging. And it just seems like the lithium is just more stable. So um, awesome two tests, great results. I'm going to be running more and EV range tests is in the future. And I also want to get more miles on the pack to be able to report back with some mileage statistics. But right now it sure looks like I'm going to see anywhere from a 10 to 20% increase in mileage. Um, so I'm, I went from, like I said, 50, uh, when, before I replaced the, the pack with the lithium iron phosphate now to about 56, 57, so, you know, 50 to 57, we're talking about 10, 15 percent. Um, but I think I might be able to jump that a little bit higher. So up to this point, I am very, very impressed with the lithium iron phosphate. It's about what I expected, but a little bit better because uh, the thermal efficiency is just out of this world. Um, the other thing, my only concern is that it will be so thermally efficient that in winter, 
Um, I may be stuck in a situation where I have uh, charge current and discharge current limits because the battery can't warm up. So <laughs> that'll be something because I'm in the Midwest that I'll I want to consider and I'll follow up with a you know part four whatever we're at when we get to that point. Given that we're in October now, but um, very impressed with this pack. Um, if you've stuck through the video this far, uh, now's a good time to point out that we have a re referral link in the bottom of the description. So if you're looking for this pack for yourself. Um, go ahead and click that link and you can launch out to the nextcellprojectlithium.com website to learn more. Um, and if you do want one, they are on sale right now for $1,900, um, which is if you compare it to a direct Toyota replacement, um, I believe that's like 10 to 15% cheaper than if you bought a brand new pack from Toyota. And um, as you, as I'm seeing with my pack, I'm seeing, you know, 15% mileage increase over OEM, which is out of this world. So um I think this is an awesome solution. I granted, I only have 400, 500 miles in this pack so far, but I'll keep reporting back with my findings because um, this is relatively new technology and it's not something that we're seeing out in the wild all too much yet, at least not with user testimonials like I'm trying to do here. So um, if you have any questions, please leave those below. If there's anything that you'd like to see tested with the lithium pack, also please let me know. Um, and Cause I have a couple more tests uh, in the, in the line here, but also wanted to report back with some, some additional findings and mileage statistics as the weather changes and as my mileage increases as well. So with that, I'll end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new. Um, go ahead and like and subscribe if you did. Like to see more. Don't forget the notification bell if you want to be notified of multiple other lithium Prius videos in the future. And I will catch you in the next video.